Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great tonight. The second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. These two commandments hang on the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us.
God, who declarest thy almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity, mercifully grant that unto us such a measure of thy grace that we, running the way of thy commandments, may obtain thy gracious promises and be made partakers of thy heavenly treasure through Jesus Christ our Lord.
written in the 18th, the ninth verse of the 18th chapter of the gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to thee, O Lord. Jesus spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week, I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not so much lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. He shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. I believe in the Holy Ghost, 
the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Well, our surprise guest this morning is, of course, Deacon David Jackson, who has been here for some time and may not be here very often again. He has now uh, hopefully sold his house. It's an escrow. If it really does close and really does get paid out, he's going to be moving to the city of Miami, Oklahoma, a city of 13,000 in far east north uh, or northeast uh, Oklahoma State with Betty, his wonderful wife. So they are planning to get out of here. They may be back uh, a time or two, perhaps during the next month where they'll be in escrow, but say your goodbyes if you can, when you can, because our Deacon Jackson is going east along with half of California, it looks like. So uh, say, to all, say hello to all the Californians when we get back here, <laughs> if they'll admit it. Anyway, welcome. Uh, we're glad to have him here this morning and celebrating with us. ACW is sponsoring Mooney, the girl in Bangladesh, through the World Vision Program pro, uh, organization and also here in Chico Women's Resource Clinic. So be part of one or both of these wonderful works at $5 a month each. And do the math at $60 check once a year. That's real easy. Give ET that check and you finished it. Now, I am leading an adult confirmation class downstairs between the two services, uh, starting at 9.15 every Sunday. All adults are welcome. That's not just for those being confirmed, but for those who wanted to brush up on what they learned when they were 10 or 12 uh, and want to relearn it, figure it out, maybe get a different training, hopefully better. But uh, or those of you who just want to see if this is your church, so happy to have anybody come join us in that. And it is, uh, it's on your bulletin, my, pardon me, but uh, the children's Bible studies, our church school will be back in full the Sunday after uh, Labor Day, Labor Day weekend. So it's, a, it's the second Sunday in September is our full uh, program is back for all the kids as well as the adults. And of course, the adults are our, my remedial students, and the kids are all our advanced students. They're all wonderful. So, likely, we'll be gone. Anyway, ACW is meeting today at 1230 in the vestry. So, what, ladies of the church, please stick around after refreshments and find out what our women are doing in our church. It's always important and always a good meeting. Uh, be there. The ACW is offering us, as a, as a for instance, our annual ice cream social on what we always lovingly call Sunday, Sunday, August the 29th this year. That's in a couple of weeks. So you can sign up now for your part in that ice cream festival, uh, whether it's ice cream of various uh, flavors or toppings of various kinds or something else that might be healthy, who knows? Maybe add that to our service, our diet of the day, but uh, big, gloopy, melting, wonderful things. We hope it's going to be real hot outside that day so we can cool off inside and enjoy each other while we're there. Thank you. And our annual church picnic is scheduled to be October the 17th, Sunday, at the home of the Faith uh, family. Deacon Brian and Cassie Faith, thank you for hosting us. We plan on having a good time. We haven't had one for almost two years, so it's it's going to be a great get together. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's now sing hymn number 300.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. O God, who declarest thy almighty power, chiefly in showing mercy and pity, mercifully grant unto us such a measure of thy grace, that we, running the way of thy commandments, may obtain gracious promises. Be made partakers of thy heavenly treasure. Our world teeters every day on the brink of either believing or disbelieving in its creator. The image of a great invisible being up in the sky, directing winds and tides, solar flares, and every living birth on this planet, the orbits of galactic dust and ion clouds, and all at the same time as the orbits of electrons in each and every atom. It's a lot to take in. How can any being have such so much to do? Hold that much power. Mankind has trouble believing in God. What I have trouble with occasionally is believing in mankind. I don't think I'm against science. Real science is one of our greatest achievements. It is looking at reality and seeing what's there. But there is a kind of science that we invent that imagines the fantastic and awesome powers of the universe as being mere accidents, all just finite and mindless matter and energy floating around doing whatever it do. Light does this or that because this is what light does. Animals seek food, but food by killing and eating other animals, of course. Our motives are mere instinct. The zookeeper is no different than the ape in a cage. He doesn't eat the gazelle only because McDonald's is easier and he keeps his job that way. The problem with such man-made science is that it lacks our better qualities. Our brain child is all brain and no heart. Such science will be a dead tool because it has no place for mercy. Lacking any place or facility for love, our pseudoscience has become indifferent regarding the objects that it takes apart. Scientists are not enthralled by the things that they see as being dead. Their zeal is only for the process of dissecting them. That's where all pro-choice arguments come from. Until a thing lives according to me, it's just dead. The most godlike thing about people is that we look at other people with compassion. If we lose that, we cease to be human. For our humanity is grounded in our being, the image and likeness of God, who cares very deeply for each one of us. The power of a Silicon Valley tycoon or a president or a general resides in his or her ability to give orders and have them carried out by lesser people. But tell me, who has the greater power? Is it power when a king or a kingpin can make someone else die? Or wouldn't you say there is more power when, having such authority, the godlike man lets someone else live? Which one was like Jesus? In his amazing life, I don't recall him ever dropping one word toward making anyone die. He commanded one fig tree to wither as an illustration, and that was it. He was at his most powerful when he took lordship over sin and death, and through love and mercy, he gave us all back our lives. Power is shown best through mercy. Mercy is how we are like God. Mercy doesn't deny truth, and if our science discovers a truth, we need only to add mercy for it really to be true. And alive. The psalmist had it right 3,000 years ago. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. In the movie Schindler's List, Oscar Schindler sought to save the Jewish inmates in a German concentration camp by curbing the cruelty of its commandant. He told him, 
They fear us because we have power to kill arbitrarily. A man commits a crime, he should know better. We have him killed and we feel pretty good about it. Or we kill him ourselves and we feel even better. That's not power. That's it. That's justice. That's different than power. Power is when we have every justification to kill and we don't. And the Nazi actually tried a week or so of showing mercy instead of random murder. But that sociopath had lost his humanity and the mercy didn't last. The point was made anyway, the power of mercy is greater than the power of indifferent cruelty. There is an ideal size to any city, I think. And when we build beyond that, concentrating people too greatly in the confines of high rises, streets, and each other's noise, that's when our best human attributes break down. The law of the jungle pertains to environments that are not jungles, but rather like overcrowded zoos. Let me drive rather through wild country and forests. My attitude is great, my heart magnanimous. You can find me in my car to gridlock in downtown Los Angeles at rush hour, and I can learn very quickly to hate people. That isn't the natural human habitat. It's inhuman, competitive, and the survival of the rudest in an arbitrary world where 10 lanes crammed with anxious commuters are required to converge their cars into one off ramp. God never made any world like that. It's the rare person indeed who can maintain mercy and forbearance when 2,000 tons of steel wants your space and right now. Mercy needs to be rescued from a cartoon world that paints it as weakness. Pansies and sissies, pale saints and lying politicians are all cast as simpering and mercy-minded, where the so-called real men and intellectual women don their superpowers and their weapons, giving them heroic achievements through destructive strength. Marvel Comics now, spoiler alert, I hate to break this to you, Marvel Comics, DC Comics is not the real world. Wolverine, Spider-Man, Wonder Woman, Beyonce and Mick Jagger are not real people. Real heroes face real threats and just smile. They smile, not because they're about to fire rockets or lasers, but because their opponent simply doesn't understand. It might be possible to disabuse him of his error. If not, a harmless escape can be found. There's really nothing to get hot over. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. It's something heroes know and they count on. Love your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the unthankful and evil, Therefore, be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Jesus was quite emphatic about this. We forgive others as a real precondition of being forgiven ourselves. It's right there in the Lord's Prayer. It's in the nature of our God. I thank God for it. It isn't out of moral or spiritual superiority that we can bestow grace and mercy on somebody who's won our pity. Rather, it's because we know how much we need God's mercy and grace ourselves. So we must be merciful and give grace to others. Jesus uses the parable of the Pharisee and publican to give a snapshot of two human hearts. The better placed man, morally superior and obedient to all the Jewish laws and almsgiving, saw himself as God's gift to the world. His ludicrous prayer of thanks suggests God should really be thankful for him being so wonderful, for being worlds better than the tax collector who were there, who was so lurking by the door and crying. That tax gatherer, like Matthew, only cried out his grief and contrition to God, pleading with him for mercy on his poor soul. 
And the man truly closer to God had his head in his hands, moaning out his deplorable failures. Mercy comes from on high. When we know how much we need it, when we fail to know our spiritual poverty, our real inheritance can be forfeited. In his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus challenged our notion of what God's commandments were really about. The Jews were set on reciprocation, doing good to someone who does good to you. Jesus likened those to sinners and traitors. Even they know that rule. But if you want to be like God, then you must love even your enemy. Love someone who can't love you back. Greet strangers and forgive the sins of others that they do to you. Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now, I never comprehended that last statement until I understood this connection. We are moving toward our likeness of God. And we'll arrive at that place when we've truly learned mercy, forgiveness, love, and compassion. I'm resistant to chick flicks and romance novels. It's not my taste. I will watch and endure them if I can. But if it gets maudlin, I bolt. You understand. The soppy side is not my natural home. If I sense mere sentimentality. Sentimentalism is the candy coating like around cereal. It isn't even real sugar. I'm more drawn to, forgive me, disaster movies. Give me a good volcano erupting or a skyscraper on fire. Bad guys threatening innocent people. Why? Well, movies of the genre give me a hero. True heroes aren't coming in with guns blazing. Rather, they're smart. They see the threat before anyone else sees it. They concern themselves with saving the innocent. They sacrifice their safety and well-being, turning toward the threat instead of escaping from it. They marshal all their strength and brain power and great heart to the saving of others, regardless of the losses to themselves. I like that kind of hero. I want to be him, honorable, genuine, not perfect, but he knows that and doesn't pretend any different. It's in a hero's nature to save others, and in so doing, a hero is like God. No superpowers, magic, or equipment belts on this guy. Mercy wins over Marvel Comics each and every time. Our colleague today speaks to me as a real light on true power and how it flexes its real muscles. Bullies and bullets don't show courage or moral strength. That's the lie of tyrants and terrorists, cowards, all of them. Mercy, love, compassion, and peace through strength are the signs of our origins from God. And so we pray, O oh God, who declarest thy almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity mercifully grant unto us such a measure of thy grace that we, running the way of thy commandments, may obtain thy gracious promises and be made partakers of thy heavenly treasure. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Oh, <laughs> 
Unless the sacrament is offered this day in the name of God, please remember your prayers. Sick, the aged, and suffering. Of our fellow parishioners, our families, and friends, Frank, Tessa, and Lisa, Harry, uh, Ann's brother, who has T cell cancer, and uh, who is seriously likely to live about care. For Tracy, Estelle, Don, Joy, Frank, Sarah, Suzanne, Patty, Laura, Craig, Justin, Carol, David, Heather, and Peter, Dennis, Frederick James, first We pray for the dying, her especially for joy, Robin, and you, uh, and for um, Eric's. Yeah, I'm uh, about to see that. Uh, Patrice's husband has been prayed here a long time. I've never been in our church, but we prayed for Harris a long time, and uh, he was that way for a very long time. Uh, he died this past week. So for him and also for Alex, for praying these prayers. Um, for the souls of Alex and Paris, souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God, rest in peace. May light and perpetual shine upon them and may the blessings of paradise be their portion. The Lord will proceed to the of the souls of Alex and Harris. Praise all the lost, the ladies, prodigals, the Lord, Greg, Joshua, Mark, Liz, Liz, Keith. Cheryl, Katie, Heidi, Ishan, Heather, James, Raj, Megan, Gary, Foley, Scott, Jane, and for all terrorists to come back to that dark place to the light of God and Christ. Pray for God's guidance, though. John and his family, Spencer, Gary, Donald, Ross, Isaac, Julie, Randy, Stevie, and Janet. With special attention, we pray for the end of these fires that they will be out and not come back. No more fires this year will be no more. Dear Lord God, um, we pray for Jamal and his family, Randy and his family, for Mooney and Jolet, for Gobi's Cafe and Saga Joy and Korea churches all over our building place, for all fire, police, EMS, and staff workers, our first online defense, that they may serve uh, honorably, be honored in their professions and families, as we pray for America's return to Christ, and for our Iran mission that is uh, aiming its message several times a week into Iran on uh, its tendency. We pray for our limited resource money for the COVID-19 recovery in our nation and our world today. For all of God's purposes done in us and through us as we will from this time. We pray for those in our service, especially in Gavin, Douglas, and Canaan, for all travelers, for our children and youth, especially in St. Augustine and the province of Christ. Now, several versions, two of them here. Clarice and, and Peter Jackson, also remembering Ajan and Beatrice for a bunch of potential, the Lord is their days in grace. The blessed God and wherever they may be, he cannot start from the world. Strengthen them like a stamp, probably the biggest story of the star. Raise them up to the fall. Our hearts and our peace and perhaps we all understand.
that's how old he is. <laughs> I said, that's how old you are. <laughs> yes. Did you also pray for those Christian parents? Are there any adversities to be blessed and so We pray with thanksgiving to God for his mercy, his kindness, his compassion, and love. The biggest and best and most important thing happens to right there at that moment. Where we are going, where we will live forever. So let's get it started. Straight down to the whole state of Christ. Mighty and ever living God, who by the holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these, our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with a spirit of truth, unity, and concord. Grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, especially John, our Archbishop, Donald and Scott, our bishops, and other ministers, especially Brian and David Deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer their holy sacraments. To all thy people give a heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life from thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow the good examples, that with them we may be partakers of the heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. He who truly and earnestly repents you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take your, this holy sacrament to your comfort. Make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most previously have committed. My thought were to be against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who with great mercy and promise to give us the sins to all those who in heart and repentance and true faith and under them, have mercy upon you, pardon and liberty from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you. In all goodness, and bring it everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Here we come to the words that say that Christ said unto all who shall return to him. Come unto me, I eat and travail, and a heavy lane, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that he can with all who believe in him should not perish, and have everlasting life. Here also, let St. Paul say, This is a true saying, and worthy of all that we receive, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save the sinners. Here also what St. John says, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We live.
God, our Heavenly Father, or that thou, thy tender mercy, didst give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute it in this holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. When the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, <clears throat> according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial, memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. We most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless, sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receive in them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, 
to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, that we in all of this who shall be partakers of this holy communion, may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us, and we in him. Remember also, O Lord, thy servants and handmaidens who have gone before us for the sign of faith and are at rest in the sleep of peace. For these, O Lord, and do all who rest in Christ, we beseech thee to grant a place of refreshment, of light, and of peace. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer to thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounded duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee. O Father, almighty world without end. Amen. Let us pray. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the And of the intercession of the blessed, glorious, and ever virgin Mary, Mother of God, with that of their blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of Andrew and all thy saints, favorably grant peace in our time. By the help of thy mercy, we may ever be kept free from sin and safe from all disquietude. Through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, liveth and reigneth, one God, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness. But in thy manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that take us away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come into my room. But I speak the word of my name, my soul shall be. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come into my room. But I speak the word of my name, my soul shall be. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come into my room. But I speak the word of my name, my soul shall be.
us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for the thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of his most precious death and passion. We humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We beseech thee, O Lord our God, that of thy goodness thou wouldst not leave without thine aid those whom thou ceasest not to refresh with thy divine sacraments. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with thee. And with thy spirit. Depart in peace. Thanks be to God. Peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds with knowledge of the God. Give us Son Jesus Christ, our Lord, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Hymn 564.
All good counsels and all just words do proceed. Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give. That our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments. And also that by thee we be defended from the fear of our enemies. May pass our time. Rest our hearts. The merits of Jesus Christ our Savior.